Hey, Sean here from speedcubeview.com. Let's learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube blindfolded. There's already a really good tutorial by Noah Arthurs, who's one of the best in the world at blind solving. The reason I'm making a video is just to go over the basics in hopefully a short and easy to understand way. His videos go into a lot more detail and also have a lot more advanced techniques. If you'd like to check his videos out, I highly recommend it and we'll put a link in the description. Now solving a cube blind is not like how you'd solve a cube normally. You don't memorize all six sides of the cubes and try to visualize all the pieces as you solve it. You're just basically tracking where one piece moves at a time. Think of it like this. If I need to put these cubes in order of color, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, instead of just moving everything all at once, I see that this first cube needs to go to the fourth spot, that cube needs to go to the fifth spot, that cube needs to go to the second spot, that cube needs to go to the third spot, and lastly, this one's back at the first spot. I'm going to go over the method known as Old Pachman. Basically, you do what I did with all the cubes a second ago with the corners and edges of a cube. I'm going to go over everything pretty quickly in this video and then go over some tips and odd situations at the end. Again, like anything else, this will take time and practice. The first thing we need to do is assign a letter to each corner and each edge. What I do is go clockwise around the cube in the top face, front, right, back, left, and bottom. So this corner is A, this B, this C, and this D. Then on the front we have E, F, G, and H. On the right we have I, J, K, and L. And then so on with M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, and X. Now for a while, I would have to count the letters to remember which piece was which letter. What is going to happen is that this top left color is your bank, where you hold the piece that will be next to be moved. After doing a certain algorithm, it will be moved to here, the bottom right spot, which I'm going to call the receiving spot. So what you will do is move the corner that the bank piece needs to go into, into the receiving spot with only using R, F, and D moves. So you do not mess up the top corner. The algorithm is a slightly altered Y perm. You do not need to do F at the beginning or F prime at the end. It's R, U prime, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, F prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R. It will get into your muscle memory pretty fast after doing it a few times. You can see that this corner was moved to the bottom right spot. Now these two edges moved, but as long as there are an even number of moves done, those edge pieces will end up in the regular spot in the end. We will talk about the odd situation later. So here is what we will do. Let's take this scramble. Make sure green is in front and white on top. B2. L2, B2, F2, U2, B2, D, L2, B2, U prime, B2, L, B, L, F prime, R, D2, F2, D2, U, R. I always like to start with yellow on top and red in front for simplicity when solving blind, and try to keep the cube this way the whole time. You need to know how the cube is set up, so I know that green is on the right, blue on left, orange on back, and white on bottom. Now we see that this blue, yellow, red corner is in the bank. But more specifically, that red sticker needs to go here, in the A, B, C, D, E spot. So now let's look at the piece and sticker that's in the E spot. It's the blue, orange, white piece, and we have that blue sticker in the E spot. It needs to go here, to the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T spot. Now the red sticker is in the T spot, is part of the red, blue, white corner, it needs to go here to the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H spot. That green piece that's in the H spot needs to go to the L spot. The yellow sticker that's in the L spot needs to go to the B spot. And now we come across the corner that is meant to be in the bank place. We still have two more corners that need to be adjusted. We need to turn this corner piece as well as this one. Now instead of thinking of it as turning the corner piece, what we're going to do is put this green sticker, which is in the P spot, into the K spot. And then move this sticker that's in the F spot to the C spot. So right now we have the letters E, T, H, L, B, P, K, F, C. So only using F, R, and D moves, I move the E sticker into the receiving spot. This takes some time to do with your eyes closed, and it's perfectly fine to move the cube slowly to get better at manipulating the cube. I find that learning algorithms to move each piece is way too much to memorize at first. Once it is set, I do an altered Y perm, and reverse those initial moves I did. Then I do the same thing for each of the letters. Move T into place, altered Y perm, and then reverse the initial moves. H,
Ella's already in the right place. B. P. And K. F. And C. Now you might have a couple times that the regular piece that goes into the bank section gets moved into the bank itself, like we just did. When that happens, you can just pick a random piece of color that has not been moved yet and continue from there. Now instead of memorizing all of those letters, I'll often combine them so I just have to remember eat, hail, burp, Kentucky Fried Chicken, instead of E-T-H L-B-P-K-F-C. You might even be able to come up with a pretty nice visual in your head for that one. Now we have moved an odd number of moves and for now we'll not worry about it, but if we were solving edges and corners in one go, we will have to do one extra thing between steps, which we will talk about in the end. If you are solving along with me, know that the edges are slightly different now than when we first mixed up the cube. If you just solved the corners along with me, you should be fine. If you just scrambled the cube from the scramble earlier, the two edges at the A and D spot need to be swapped since we did an odd number of moves when solving the corners. If you're just watching, then there's nothing to worry about. We will do the same thing for edges that we just did for the corners. We'll still count A, B, C like I did before, but they're on edges instead of corners. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, and X. The bank spot is here now, and instead of an altered Y perm, you'll either do a T perm or a J perm. It's best to know how to do both. Now you only do L and D moves, but you can also do a lowercase L and lowercase D moves. You just don't want to alter anything on this bar. So again, I start at the bank piece and see that it's a red, green piece. That red piece needs to go to the A, B, C, D, E, F spot. That F yellow sticker needs to go to the A spot. That A sticker needs to go here to the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H spot. H to T. T to J. J to V. V to O. O to U. U normally would be in the bank spot, but we still have a few unsolved edges. I will just randomly pick D because that's easy to start with, and D hasn't been solved yet. D needs to go to C, C to X, and X to Q. So I will now start by putting the F sticker in this receiving spot and do a T perm. So I'll put it into place by doing a lowercase d2 and L followed by a T perm. And reverse the setup moves. A is actually quite tricky. I will do a lowercase L2, D prime, L2, and then a T perm followed by reversing the setup. H is an easy setup. T. J, V, O, I will do a D2 and lowercase L prime to put it here and do a J perm. U, I'll do a T perm. D is already set up for a T perm. C is already set up for a J perm. X is an easy setup for a T perm. Q 
is a bit awkward because you cannot just do a T perm and need to move it out and over here for the J perm. Now you are done. Again, that can feel like a lot of letters to memorize, but if you give them words, it might just make things easier. So on average, you would have to remember around 10 words, depending on how creative you can be, and what has to happen to solve all the edges and corners. Now if you memorize all corners and edges at the same time, you'll either have an even number of letters for both sets, or an odd number. If you have an odd number, you will need to do an R permutation before going on to the next section, to make sure the pieces are in the right spot. I first learned a special one where I didn't rotate the cube, but realized I like the one I normally use better. I would turn the cube 90 degrees, to the blue face, or a Y prime move, and do the R perm that I use. Since we only did the corners first and then memorized the edges, we wouldn't run into this issue. Now I practiced memorizing two moves at once while looking at the cube, then four letters, then tried doing the four letters without looking at the cube, and then all corners followed by all edges, and the first time I solved the cube, the full memorization and solve took around 15 minutes. I did it again right after that successfully, but then failed to solve it another six times in a row after that. This is a whole different way of training your brain than regular solving of the cube. There are other methods and alterations, like M2 for edges, which uses much fewer moves, but can be a bit more difficult to learn. Again, take your time. Ask questions in the comment section below. There are other great videos out there, like the ones from Noah Arthur's, which is how I initially learned how to solve blind. I'm in no way a fast solver in blind, and for more advanced techniques, this channel would be the one to check out. Please feel free to leave your thoughts or questions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and stop by speedqbview.com for more news and reviews.